is rock and roll. WVOX Radio, and also host of tonight's episode, This is Rock and Roll, we have Mr. Dennis Dion Nardone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Mary. Very oh, nice oh. intro. And the band, tremendous as always, Just Nuts Band. And welcome to This is a Rock and Roll, and my name is Dennis Dion Nardone, and this is the show that features the stars of the music world. But uh, let's say th thank you and, uh, to the guys behind the scene, our producers, Victor Sabatini, and also Tyrone Burkle, and of course, Al Balfieri do a great job. Let's give them a hand. And Mary, you look so beautiful all in silver. Thank you. I gotta tell you, Mary, I am so excited tonight. The Earls. I know. The Earls, the world famous Earls are on the TV show. So with that, Let's say hello and bring them all out. Larry Chance, Bobby T, Bobby Coleman of the Earls, ladies and gentlemen. Come on out. Hi, I'm Dennis. Good to see you. And you brought Bobby T. So happy to be here on the set of West Side Story. There you go. Take a seat, guys. Take a seat. Let's get right into the Earls, baby. The Earls live in the studio. You want to sit behind the desk with me? Sure. Okay, you can do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Chance. You know, on the radio show, I call you the legend. Because you are the legend. Yeah, in my own mind. Ah, well, you're the legend. And uh, Bobby T, Bobby Coleman. And uh, Larry, uh, first, how many years has this guy been with you, Bobby T? 54. 54. Same age as me. <laughs> and Bobby Coleman's been around, what, about 20 years? 30 years. Over 30, over 30 something. Well, welcome to This Is Rock and Roll, guys. Uh, true honor to have you on the show. Bronx guys all the way. All the way. And uh, right from the heart of the Bronx, yes, too. The heart of the Bronx. The heart of the Bronx. Larry Champ, now, of course, you started in Philadelphia. Yes, South Philadelphia. Now, you were the land of Bobby Rydell, Chubby Check. Did you know any of those guys? I knew Ernest, yeah, uh, Chubby. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Oh, so, and. and Same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. And what neighborhood is it? South so Frankie, Bronx? Yeah, South Frankie Philly? went to the same schools I attended. Frankie Avalon. And uh, Mario Lance, you know him? Did I read something about Mario Lance? Mario, well, my father used to get his sword sharpened by Mario's got grandfather. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Larry, how old were you when you came to the Bronx? Fifteen. Fifteen, and you went right to... Uh... Caught a beating. <laughs> that didn't take long, Got initiated right, right away. <laughs> Evander Childs, you went right to Evander Childs? Right to Evander. No, yes. Yes, Evander Childs High School. And uh, so anyway, you're in high school, you're in the Bronx, and a uh, little different from uh, Philly. And uh, why, did you, why did you guys move anyway? Same, well, my dad got a better job. Oh, okay. Yeah, were you already a singer by then? I always sang, yeah. You always sang. You were singing in Philly before you came? Always sang. Okay. Hey, we got a picture. You want to see this picture? <laughs> Bobby T. That's this funny looking guy. Before he started with uh, jazz and singing and with you, he was a doo -wopper. He so sang he doo -wop, baby. Yep. The diplomat. Now, which one is you? Uh, the tall guy. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, right here. Right there. I guess uh, I'm, uh, I must be about 14 years old. 14 years old? Yeah. And uh, what's the name of the group? The Diplomats. Diplomats. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean... 
play drums first, actually, Dennis. I, I, then, then I realized that there was something else happening out there. Uh -huh. And then I got out there and started to sing on the corner with, with a bunch of guys, and we used to, you know, yeah. harmonize and, 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 and all the zoom, 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 and all those great songs. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know. How did you meet up with Larry 54 years ago? I, I was laying in the street one day drunk, and he picked me up. Oh. I thought it was the other way around. No, I, actually, I was uh, working in a club in Manhattan called the uh, Metropole Cafe. Okay. And Jimmy Ficassi, a guy you know pretty good, came down to see me with Jack Ray, the uh, original baritone slash bass singer of the Earls. Uh -huh. And uh, it started that way. You know, Jack Jack heard me and he went back and told Larry, he, he said uh, that he thought Bobby T would be a good fit. And that's how it happened. And Bobby, uh, Larry was already singing with this group? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, was it the High Hatters at the time? No, it was the Euros by then. Oh, by then you were yeah. the Euros. Okay, so I'm jumping. All right, Bobby Coleman. Uh, yes, sir. years with the Euros? 30 plus. 31, I think. Really? Mm hmm Now, you're from uh, Arthur Avenue section in the Bronx? No, uh, Bronx River Projects. Then I grew up in Mount Vernon. And then I, I actually moved back to the Bronx. I'm the only person so far that's yeah. done that. You know? <laughs> now, as Larry always likes to say on stage, you're the smart one of the group. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have one. You don't have two. You have three college degrees. Yeah. And uh, one's from, let me guess, Iona College? Right. Uh, you do? <laughs> Columbia? <laughs> yes. And Manhattan? Right. What the, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what did you get? Were you, are you a professor or something? Oh, no, no. Uh, well, the, my bachelor's was in, in from Manhattan College in mechanical engineering, and then I got an MBA from Iona and an MS from Columbia Business School. Nothing. Sounds like a lot, of, a lot of BS to me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is a lot, really. A pile higher and deeper, as they say. <laughs> Um, Larry Chance and the Euros here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rock and Roll. My name is Dennis Dion. No, don't. Uh, Larry, uh, let's go. We, um, you're singing, and uh, the group called the High Hatters. Yes. How did that all form? Tell me about that. Well, our plan was to get um, spats, white tails and tucks, white gloves, top hats, canes, but we didn't have any money. So we said, well, it's not good. But each guy had a... a, a a name he wanted the group to be called. So I said, well, the fair one, we, we open up a dictionary. I put my finger in, whatever it lands on. That's a true story? True. I put it in and said, Earl, nobleman of high rank. I said, that's it, with the Earls. The Earls. No, I was, I was happy I didn't put up like an eighth of an inch more. We'd have been the ears. <laughs> I don't think that would have worked. No. All right, so we become the Earls, and uh, we're talking the early 60s, right? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, 59. 59. And, uh, okay, so you sing, you got the Euros, and uh, you're in the Bronx, of course. Uh, Riviera Lounge, what, why does that come to mind? Well, we went to the Riviera Lounge. It was uh, uh, five nights a week. We went for a two-week engagement and left 107 weeks later. So we got hold of, held over for a couple of weeks. Yeah. All right, so how did we get into recording? Uh, who, was your, who said, hey, you guys, come, let's go record. Or I know you're on the, uh, uh, refresh my memory, uh, Old Time label, right? Old Town. Old Town label. But prior to that, we were on the Rome record label. Okay. Which was um, owned by Johnny Power and Trade Martin. Trade, of course, had his own hits. And uh, it was distributed by uh, Bill Buchanan of, of Buchanan and Goodman fame. Mm. And Life is But a Dream was the first. And, um, Life is but a dream. Right, that was on Rome, and so was looking for my baby. And uh, then we went to Old Town, where we recorded Remember Then, and Never and Eyes, and Kissing, and... What? Eyes one of my favorite shows. Songs. Thank you. I like that song. And, uh, okay, so, um, now the Remember Then was probably your first big hit? First big national hit, yes. Big national hit. Okay, and uh, so I took off from there, and then uh, started traveling a lot. Absolutely. And uh, TV shows, radio shows. Yes. And uh, where did you end up? You do? Did you do American Bandstand? Yes, a couple of times. Really? Absolutely. Bobby T, you on American Bandstand too? No. The you know the ship was sailing already, Dennis, and then yeah. I then I 
got on the ship, and that that's when it really took off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I actually joined the group around, uh, it, it was early 64. Okay. Yeah. All right, so all right, you joined the group 64. You have a little jazz behind you. Let's talk about that. Well, right I, actually, actually, I have a lot of jazz behind me. My, you know, my first love was jazz and, and, uh, because of my oldest brother and my uncle who played drums and, you know, I was around around that all the time in the house. Big band, uh, big bands, uh, Buddy Rich, Steve Cooper, my idol. And uh, so, I, I mean, jazz is still in my heart. It'll always be there. Mm. But again, like I said before, I realized that, that there was other things happening. And, yeah. I got, and I got involved because I had an ear for harmony, now and you, I did it. Now, you, you involved with Dion a little bit? Uh, just once. Once? Yeah, once. once uh, about another, about right? 1960, uh -huh. actually, yeah. And, and f funny you ask, because I sent him the picture just the other day. Oh. And he said, where is this from? <laughs> so my daughter's been with him because they're uh, rehearsing for a new play about him. Uh -huh. So I said, tell him it's from a, actually a wedding that we did. And they, he said, whose wedding? And he couldn't remember the guy's name. And he married his cousin. Uh. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah so... Uh, you well, you know, of course, they um, we came came uh, from the same neighborhood, Belmont. I'm take a drink well, the from Belmont section, actually. Mary, we have any gifts for our guests? Does Mary look lovely to you? She always looks lovely. Thank you. Oh, wow. Bobby Coleman, Bobby Trevizio. Thank you very much. Right? You got it right. I'd like to you thank my producer, it. my director, yeah. my writer, <laughs> and my mom. Thank you. Uh, Bobby, you mentioned Jimmy Fricassi. Did you work with Jimmy Fricassi? Oh, he was, uh, no, he was no, on our show. Well, well, Jimmy's the guy who brought Jack Ray down to see me. Uh -huh. Because he was in the Earls already. For, not too long at the time, but yeah. he was in the Earls already. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we, and, you know, Bar Barbara Harris, I think, is going to be on your show soon. Yes. Or oh, maybe she was on already, I don't know. But back in the Riviera days, yeah. Larry just, just mentioned, we, we were there for uh, two years. And we cut a whole bunch of shows, and Barbara House being one of them, she was in several times. Mm. On a Saturday night in the rim, they always brought in another act, and we had a great time. Friday and Saturday, they were in acts. Well, okay. okay. And we were, we were involved in that, cutting the shows from, mm -hmm. from yeah. the Four Tops to, uh, to uh, Chuck Berry. <laughs> Our guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Chance. We call him the legend on my radio show, and his, his songs are just uh, legendary. And of course, Bobby T, Bobby Coleman. Bobby Coleman, now, uh, you, you play the bass, guitar with the group, but you play other instruments. Yeah. Uh, you play keyboards, and you, you never do that with the Earls? You never play uh, with the Earls? Uh, uh, here and there. Uh, actually, I started on accordion with Dr. Fabrio in Mount Vernon, you know, back in. The, just after the Civil War, long time ago. And, and then when the Beatles came out, I remember thinking, I'm never gonna get lucky playing the accordion ever. And, and I was, that was true. So I, I, I learned the guitar on my own and, uh, and, then, and then I did work. So, and then I played with Carlo Mastrangelo from the Belmonts in the oh, Bronx okay. in the early 70s, uh, 1970s. And that was for about three years, six and nights a week. Carlo left uh... Florida, yeah. Okay. And then through him, I met the Belmonts and the Regents. I played with the Regents on a lot of jobs and uh, with the Belmonts for about seven years in the early 80s. And then I left, I played with Ray Allen. This was guitar, bass, keyboard, no more accordion. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. uh, played with Ray Allen, uh, the guy who wrote for Pino, the Italian Mouse, yeah, yeah, and yeah, for yeah. Connie Francis. Ray Allen Trio was somebody. Yeah, there well, five of us. And. Uh, after a couple of months there, our keyboard player, John Weiss, uh, called me because I said, I'm playing some bass now, too. You know, I knew two notes, you know, yeah, same yeah. two notes in every key. Right? Yeah. So he says, I said, you know, if you hear of any jobs on bass, and a couple of weeks later, he calls me and he was sitting with uh, one of the members of the Earls and uh, or a couple and said they needed somebody to fill in in Atlantic City two nights a week for their bass player on, yeah. on bass. So I did that, and uh, it ended up working, and I've been with them ever since. Yeah. Now, you and Larry co-wrote a song, Refresh My Memory, uh, a cappella with my friends, right? right, right. That's a great song. Oh, okay. uh, how did that come about? Uh, just words and music and Actually, something hit, uh, just I, like any other writing a song? I wrote it a long time ago, like the first version of it. Yeah. And then I was like in the late 80s, and then in the late 90s, Larry uh, upgraded and improved the, uh, the yeah. version. 
and changed it to a swing and added a couple of verses and uh, and then we recorded it yeah. and you know it's got some I'll airplay with my friends Tracy. thanks to you you play it all the time oh, I love it. all right let's do a video uh, I think we got a video and I think the first one is remember then and so let's check out the uh, Larry Chance and Earls singing remember then One quick thing, you notice towards the end of the video they showed the drummer? It happens to be my son. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, who I just met the other day, by no, the way. No, actually, this is my younger son, really? Anthony. Wow, yeah. great. Now, Larry, i got to tell you this. Now, I, I've observed this about you all these years. You truly, truly love singing and performing for people. I mean, everyone does, don't get me wrong, but you, there's a little extra energy and, and you love to make people have a good time, bring back memories, and you really, truly love to perform for people. Absolutely. That's what I live for. Yeah. I tell you, a, sure. and once again, on the radio, we call you the legend. Oh, thank you. And, and um, let's go, uh, let's have a little fun here. Santana Banana. <laughs> what is Santana Banana? How'd that happen? Okay, there was. Of course, that was on the I Miss show for years. I Miss in the Morning, which was. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know that. When I said, you know, Larry was a Santana Banana, they said, what? Yeah, here in New York, uh, the number one radio show for many years was the I Miss in the Morning show. And I, I was um, privileged to do some characters on that show. And Araldo Santana Banana was the uh, vice president, general manager in charge of Edito Jolo Peño. And he was a crazy 